If at first you don't succeed, try, 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 try. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Locked On Capitals. I am your host, as always, the insider of the insiders, Tyler Kuehl, here for this Tuesday edition of Locked On Caps, where we're going to talk about the Washington Capitals' loss last night to the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, that was a um, um, uh, um, a tough one, but certainly seemingly more optimistic than uh, I'd say even after they beat the Ottawa Senators on Saturday night. We'll talk about that game. We'll get an update look at the standings, of course, as a result of that loss, because, hey, guess what, kids? Chris Kreider is the leading goal scorer in this National Hockey League now. Uh, yikes, that's a thing. I didn't think I was ready to say that. 30 goals on the air for the New York Rangers guy. And there's a reason why the Rangers are, you know, one of the best teams in the league now. Yeah, that's another thing I didn't think I was going to say heading into the season. Also, we're going to address some of the whispers and the chitter chat about Evander Kane coming to the Capitals. And I'm going to give my piece on it because you know what? Well, this is lockdown caps number one and number two refer to number one. So once again, thank you for making lockdown capitals your first listen and first watch today and every day free and available on all platforms, whether it be on the lockdown capitals, YouTube channel and or wherever you get your podcasts. So certainly anywhere you can catch us to talk about the game that, you know, it's it's tough. First of all, Vegas has been one of the best teams on the road this season. We didn't really talk about and address the fact that coming into this game, they'd won six straight road games before Monday night. Like that right there is an impressive mark and certainly a real change of where Vegas has been because usually Vegas had this moniker of only being able to really win at home because first of all, playing at T-Mobile Arena is like playing in the middle of a circus because all these loud noises, the crowd screaming obsessively for seemingly no reason. Maybe it's because, you know, they are still little naive hockey fans there in Vegas. I mean, they're hockey fans, but, you know, it's like our team's always been good, so we can always have a reason to cheer for them, even though they've never, you know, had to go through the early 2000s era like the Capitals did or, uh, you know, the late, you know, the last couple of years for the Red Wings or the Rangers for the last four years and so on and so forth. Like teams that, you know, have had success, but, you know, have been around long enough to stink and stink very, very badly. Heck, the base of this franchise, the Capitals, um, have still have the worst record in the history of the National Hockey League. So there is that to look at from that side of things. But anyways, the game starts and very even game. Like this was a very tight, hard battle throughout. And I really thought that the Capitals were going to get a goal at some point. Um, the first period was split up into two halves. Caps come out strong, flying in the first few minutes. Robin Leonard makes a couple big saves. And then we go to the second half of the period where Vitek Vanacek has to make a couple big saves as well, including a couple nice stops on the penalty kill. So we go to scoreless through the first 20 minutes, which is fine. You know, I this was a game where it wasn't like the Caps had to score five goals to impress me. This was the Vegas Golden Knights. And back to the Vegas Golden Knights that are a team that is a certain competitive top team in their division. They are the top in the Pacific division at this point now with 52 points after the win. But, you know, you kind of expected this to be a you know more competitive game and a game that not necessarily the Capitals were they they had to win. It's more or less just the fact that, you know what, if they beat them, great, because it's a measuring stick game given how they've played over the last few games. So. I thought they played good coming out of the gate. We go to the second period. They start off even better. Shots are coming out wazoo here at the second period because more and more chances on the power plays for both teams, and including that one great chance for Ovechkin on a five-on-three early on in the frame or earlier on in the frame and just unleashed a rocket of a shot. Actually, we'll wait on that for a second because we got to mention the goal that happened um, just right before that. A shot by Brett Howden. Brett Howden, by the way, who, if you go on his NHL profile, NHL.com profile, is still in his New York Rangers sweater. Like, that's kind of how far away he's been from, uh, or how new he is to the Vegas Golden Knights. Takes a shot from the point, and you watch the replay again. Vanacek was initially screened by Connor Sheary. Then Sheary does the Matador Ole out of the way to get, you know, try to find some space and 
you know, Vanacek makes a save, but he didn't really get a good read on it. Ends up kind of squeaking by. Michael Amadio bats it in his fourth of the season. It's one nothing Golden Knights. You know, that was that's a tough one from a goaltender's standpoint because you can only make so many big saves in a game like that, but you, if you can't see it, I know people say, well, sure, you got out of the way, you know, and he knew the shot was coming. Well, yeah, but uh, you want to track that puck as a goaltender from his stick to your equipment, whether it be glove, blocker, pads, mask, as we'll get to in a second. You want to be able to see it all the way through, and Vanny wasn't able to do that. That's the hard part. Double V was, able to, was not able to get a good read on all the way through, and Ended up squeaking through the fought, squeaking by him, and Mario batted in. I does it look like a squeaker? You know, one that maybe he should have had. Sure, but it's hard to get a good look and a good track on that one. So, so it's one nothing. And then, like I said, the Caps get back to back power plays. Dad or Dadonov goes off for interference, and then a delay game penalty. Puck over the glass by Braden McNabb, and it's five on three. Great opportunity for Washington to tie this one up. They got a few chances, but man, it's so hard because, you know, we mentioned the good looks that this team is getting on the power play. And the problem is, I think in this game was Robin Leonard. This, there are games throughout the season where you lose games, where you, where you get beat and you fail and falter, whatever. Then there's games you get goalied. And this was a game where the Capitals were goalied in this one. And that's, that's an easier pill to swallow than dare. Like I said, dare I say beating the Ottawa senators in overtime. So, and of course we got to mention that shot by Ovi ringing off the cheekbone of, of Leonard right off the cage of his mask. He had to get a whole new mask because of it, because Alex Ovechkin, we've always known has had a shot, has had a cannon of a shot. And I don't know how many of us expected to, I don't want to say stop it, but, like this guy was like Leonard's a tough dude. He is a tough sob. He'll fight you. He'll punch you. He'll kick you. He'll tell you how he feels about everything. He's not willing to you know shy away from the truth and speak his mind. This guy's tough in every sense of the word. He's got a tough looking beard as well. So when you see him kind of a little bit worse for wear after an old Alex Ovechkin shot off the mask, yeah, it's a door. It's a bell ringer for sure. And I've told this story time and two before where Marty Furk and I, um, we never got into it because he was a pro hockey player and I was no more than, you know, a club college fed league tryout kind of guy. Furk had this slap shot that we found out later could be about 106 miles an hour. And he would take these one timers and summer skates and ring them off my dome. And I would just, I, I, I never officially got a concussion, but the lights were flashing at the rink for about a good half hour, 45 minutes. And so <laughs> that was, it's, that's why I can attest to the fact that, you know what, uh, it's sometimes as a goaltender, it's a little scary. I know there's a reason why there's a mask and there is a reason why you play at the lower levels or even college. Well, not college, but uh, junior ranks in Canada and junior ranks. Well, no, not even no junior ranks. Even in the United States, you can wear the the big cat eyes. What you see most goaltenders wear the what we wore. I've worn um, growing up was you either had the crossbars mask where it was, you know fully caged, like just like a like a normal college player or youth hockey players is, or there are some, what we call the, uh, the, the kitten eyes, the little cat eyes where it's the cat eyes bars, but there's a couple extra bars right beneath the, where the eyes see could see through. So the pucks wouldn't get through because Kevin Weeks has told the story before when he was with the Detroit Vipers back in the day where he actually had a puck cut him right below the eye because it got lodged into his cat eye. Thankfully for Leonard's sake, this one caught him off the cheek or I think it was this side of the cheek. It would have been, but had to get a new mask. And you know, there are times like that when it was a goaltender, you're making saves, you're looking great. You think you're invincible, you're invincible. And then you take one slap shot and all of a sudden you get shaken in your boots a little bit. I, every goaltender every so often has that where they get like a puck in the ribs in practice or warmups. And I, gosh, and, and, it, and it rattles them. I remember one time, I know it's story time here. We'll get back to the game here in a second. And we'll if, maybe take a quick pause here. But the when I was also skating with a couple of the Grand Rapids Griffins, Louis Mark Aubrey was with the team at the time. I think now plays in the German. Last time I checked, he played in the Dell. He had this snapshot and ho- like good hockey players, good pro hockey players have a snapshot that will rise up. Ovechkin has that. 
because uh, Netsov can kind of let that one go. Obviously, Ferk does, and um, I, Jack Eichel has a similar shot as well, but a good shot where it kind of ramps up a little bit, and if it's from 50 or so feet out, you'll honestly see it do a rising effect. I remember one time he took a shot from the top of the circles, and I swore it was going just above my pad. And it rose up so quickly that it ends up hitting me right underneath my left arm here. And I made the save. I, the puck went wide of the goal. It went through me, but hit off my side and went to the corner. Hurt like hurt like hell. And I end up kind of, you know, been a little bit of a pain, but I'm not, once again, I'm for me who I am trying to, I don't say make a name for myself, but get better as a goaltender. I'm not going to sit out for the side because, you know, oh, I got puck in the ribs. I'm okay. We go back into the locker room after the skate. And at the time I was wearing all, I used to wear all black Under Armour where I'd wear black tops, black bottoms or whatever. Um, Cause it was thicker, a little more absorbent. Actually it was, well, it wasn't Under Armour, it was Nike, but regardless. And I remember I'm like, huh, my gear is not too wet over here, but kind of right over here. It's a little wet. I take it off and there is a honest to goodness, like blistering red, like blotchy, blood spot on the side of my skin because Louis Mark Aubrey's snapshot skinned me like a cat, like where it actually drew blood. Like I've been hit before, like in the collarbone where it kind of draws blood, but like skinned me. Like it was about this long across my ribs. Sorry if I'm getting too graphic for you kids out there, but honest to goodness. And I remember Aubrey comes over and he looks at me like we go in the shower after the skating. He kind of looks at me. He's like, yeah, all right. And you kind of bleeding there. I'm like, yeah, Lou, that was, that, that, that was you. And he's like, Oh, Oh, my bad, bud. And so we had a chuckle out of that. But hey, as I tell every people, I tell everyone, you know what? It hurt, but I made the save. It would hurt more if the puck went in the back of the net because that means I didn't stop it. So goaltenders were a little weird. We'll get back to the Capitals game here in just a moment, guys. But I got to remind you, Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the sports wagering action for 2022. New year and new updated desktop and mobile website. Sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code locked on to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Do not wait. Take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. So going back to the game we were talking about still, so it's one nothing at the halfway mark of the hockey game. The caps right now were just, they're still peppering shots on goal. I mean, they were, they were keeping Robin Leonard busy by the end of the, now the shots though were pretty close by the end of the second period. Uh, they were 23 to 20 in favor of the golden Knights. The third period though, the caps turn it on. They were firing everything, which way the best part is about the third period in one goal game, even in the regular season, the game is tight, but no penalties. Five on five throughout. And, you know, given the fact that the Caps went 0 for 5 on the power play in this one, including having a chance early in the third period, it it stinks that they couldn't score with the man advantage. But they got a boatload of chances. 14 to 6 for the shots in the final 20 minutes in favor of the Caps. They're firing everything at the goal. Leonard's making big save after big save, getting help from the post, getting help from his teammates. Uh, there was the one chance, of course, when Ovechkin has the puck in the slot. He sees Backstrom to his left, and he thinks that's a better scoring chance, which, once again, the greatest goal scorer in the history of hockey looks at passing the puck as a great scoring chance. You can't really go wrong with him there. It's a beautiful feat across, but unfortunately, Alex Petrangelo's greedy big butt was in the way. That's right. I got you, Blues fans. I'm with you there. Gets in the way of the shot. Would have probably gone in the back of the net. And you know what? Actually, the way Leonard was playing, he probably is going to get a blocker on it or an arm on it or something. Like he was playing fantastic in this one and, and his team in front of him played tight as well. Comes down in the final seconds. Caps can't score. It's over. One nothing loss. Ouch. That that's a bummer because in a game where you play well and you don't win, that's like I say, I feel better out of this game than I was from Saturday. Sure. But the fact of the matter is it's a little bit of a stinger when you know you came that close. Like if it's a 3-2 game, I think if you score a couple, it's a little bit different. But when you get shut out, by the way, I don't think we're making enough of this. I'm I, I'm trying to look it up. Well, sorry, I tried looking it up since the game was over. This is the first time this season that the Washington Capitals have been shut out this season. 
the last time, let me see if I can quickly pull it up here. I'm trying to think of the last time the Capitals were actually shut out. Washington Capitals 2020 21 schedule. Hockey reference. Heck yeah. They're my good friends. Well, they're not my friends, but you know. Um, goals for. Here we go. Let's see. They were shut out the last time they were shut out was May 1st of last year when they were, well, well, that's the regular season. What about the playoffs? They were not shut out in the playoffs at all. They scored in each of these uh, five games against the Bruins. But the last time they were shut out was a 3 nothing loss at the hands of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And that was back on May 1st of 2021. So it's been a minute. It has been a minute. It's been, you know, almost eight months since they've been shut out. And, you know, that just shows how good the offense has been this year. Even when they're a little lackluster, they at least find a way to get one on the board, two on the board. And this one, they got goalie. Like I said, it's hard to beat a good goaltender. And Robin Leonard, I'm not saying, I'm not going to go Vesna candidate because unfortunately this season, there is a lot of well-deserving goaltenders that deserve the individual accolade here. But Leonard certainly put himself in the conversation of being one of the top goaltenders again in this league. You know, because when we thought when Marc-Andre Fleury wasn't there as the safety blanket for the Golden Knights, we didn't know how Leonard was going to be. We didn't know if that he was going to be able to be a number one goaltender by himself because, well, let's look at the numbers here. Or let's look at his past recent history. When he was with the New York Islanders winning the Jennings Trophy, he had Thomas Grice with him, a little bit of a nice safety blanket. Yes, was Leonard the starter in the playoffs? You're right, he was, but... During the regular season, he was good, but Grice was good as well. Leonard was a little bit better. He goes to Chicago, tries his best, but unfortunately, the team in front of him was not great. So what happens? He ends up going to the Vegas Golden Knights, where he was traded, and he had Marc-Andre Fleury with him. Did Leonard get the starts come the playoffs? Yes, but he had someone there behind him that, just in case he faltered, the team could rely on. Even though Alan Walsh wasn't too much of a fan of the move, uh, putting him in the start for the playoffs, but to each their own. So now he's all by himself. And, you know, we, we all kind of wondered what would happen with him being the number one guy. So right now, knock on wood, he's playing pretty good. You know, you look at you look at his numbers, you look at his play here. It's the first star, 34 safe shutout for Leonard. I, I'm i really thinking he's starting to pick up his play. This season alone, he's 17-11-1 and one with a 285 goals against average and a 907 save percentage. I know those are not world-beating numbers, but... Look at that compared to how what like how he was playing earlier on this year. And I still have to remind myself that this guy's 250 pounds. Like that right there is freaky. So after the game last night, now the Caps have lost 11 games this season, 23, 11, and 9, which is tied for second, uh, third least in the Metropolitan Division behind the Carolina Hurricanes and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Them and the Rangers have each lost 11 games this year. The difference between the Rangers and the Capitals, though, is that those we talk about it nine overtime and shootout losses for the Caps, only four for the New York Rangers. We've talked about it and I've put it down on the ground for you, and it's there. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights now three points ahead of the Anaheim Ducks in the Pacific Division. However, the Ducks have three ga- or two games in hand, while the Kings, who the LA Kings, who sit third in the Pacific, that's once again, that's another thing that's going on out west. 48 points, just four back of the Golden Knights with a game, or actually with the Golden Knights having a game in hand on them. So tight battle out there in Pacific Division. Um, we actually talked about it on the recent episode of Locked in NHL, Mike DiStefano and I on the Tuesday edition. So right after you listen or watch this, you can go check that out over on the Locked on NHL YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcast. We talked about how the Eastern Conference might be decided based on the fact that there is a good point gap between the uh, wildcard teams and everyone else. Uh, mentioned the fact that between fourth and fifth, Washington and Columbus in the Metro, there is an 18 point spread. That's right, 18 points between the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are below 500, and the Washington Capitals, who have 55 points on the year. You go over to the Atlantic Division, Boston, who holds the second wild card spot, currently, with the time we're recording this, 50 points on the year with only 39 games played. The Red Wings, with 42 games played, have 42 points and even 500. Now, we did mention, though, the fact that the New York Islanders who won seven of the last 10 games, excuse me, seven of the last 10 have uh, 34 points in 34 games played. They are 14, four and six pretty much means that they have a chance to do it. They have a chance to do the St. Louis blues thing. I don't know if it'll be possible, but 
If there's a team to do it in the Eastern Conference, I think it's them because we've known that this is a good hockey team out there in, uh, in Long Island. They just did not have a great start. But if they can turn it around like they've done a little bit lately here, make things interesting, that, that wild card spot's not going to be locked down as we thought by Christmas, you know, the way things were looking there in both divisions. So we'll try not to keep our eyes on that as we move forward towards the postseason. So looking at these scores from last night, from Monday night, we'll talk about the games on Tuesday as well. The Speaking of the Bruins, they lost to the Anaheim Ducks last night. That's why the Ducks are keeping up there with the Golden Knights. 5-3 win on the road for Anaheim. Rangers and Kings, we talked about how great of a game that was. Rangers, the the, the, the Pacific Division, the Metropolitan Division leaders, 3-2 in a shootout over the Los Angeles Kings. Now, for those that don't didn't watch the game, uh, Brandon Lemieux had a major boarding call against him. This guy's got to be suspended for a long time after a stupid hit like that. Um, look it up. You guys can find it on YouTube or Twitter or whatever. Dirty hit from behind in the boards. Defenseless player. Every Checks every single box for him to get 15 games for a hit like that. So we'll have to wait to see what the Angel Department of Public Suspensions has to do on that one. Uh, the Dallas Stars pull out a win uh, with the Philadelphia Flyers. 3-1 win. At Wells Fargo Center, the Flyers have a quick turnaround. They play the New Jersey Devils. Not the New Jersey Devils, no. Dallas plays the New Jersey Devils. Flyers are in Long Island taking on the Islanders. That's going to be an important game because Keith Yandel will be playing, knock on wood, in game 965. He made it through the game last night, no problem. Let's hope nothing happens today. Knock on wood to set the all-time NHL consecutive games record. Uh, we also talked about that as well with the lot on locked in NHL with Mike and I, we were discussing the fact that how Doug Jarvis, his 964 games played all of them consecutive. That was every single NHL game he ever played, got sent down or got scratched. One game was sent to the minors, never played in the NHL ever again. The weirdest story ever. So, but like I said, we talked about that and we'll probably talk about it a little bit tomorrow as well here on locked on caps. Um, talk about the achievement of Keith Yandel. Uh, back to Monday's games. Uh, of course, the Knights holding on against the Capitals. Minnesota, huge winners over the Montreal Canadiens at home, 8-2. to two. Kirill Kaprizov, 100 points in 92 games. I think he's the first Russian since Ovechkin to hit that mark, hit 100 points within 100 games. So good for Kirill the Thrill in St. Paul in the land of 10,000 lakes. The Avalanche hold on for a 2 nothing victory over the Chicago Blackhawks and the Calgary Flames. They were angry after losing to the Edmonton Oilers on Saturday night. So they came out and only beat, you know, the St. Louis Blues 7-1 to at the Saddle Dome up in Calgary. They were just on fire. Yikes. Bennington did not have a great start either for the Blues, which only furthers the conversation. Dare I say heats up the conversation, the goaltending controversy between he and Billy Huso in St. Louis. Games on Tuesday night's tab for you. Ottawa hosting the Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo coming off the big win against the Philadelphia Flyers this past weekend. The Ottawa Senators playing some pesky hockey. We talked about them and the Caps, of course, on Saturday. The Sens and the Habs both playing some very interesting games, even though the you know Habs got their teeth kicked in by Minnesota, but that's a different story. Uh, the Dallas Stars taking on the New Jersey Devils. That's the ESPN Plus game of the night, or the first one at least. Arizona going traveling over to Western Pennsylvania to take on the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Vegas Golden Knights have a second half of a back-to-back. They get the Carolina Hurricanes. Expect the Ram with Spa in net for the Golden Knights there. Mentioned the Flyers and Islanders. Historic night. 7.30 puck drop for that one. The Florida Panthers up in Manitoba taking on the Winnipeg Jets. That should be an interesting one. The Jets trying to get back into the Central Division race while the Florida Panthers are tied for the best record in the National Hockey League. No big deal. The Canucks and Oilers, that'll be out at 10 o'clock in the 10.30 ESPN Plus game. will feature the Nashville Predators, or 10 o'clock, not 10.30. Nashville Predators and the Seattle Kraken at Climate Pledge Arena. So, last thing here before I let everyone go, we need to address what kind of was dropped on the Hockey Night in Canada tab. Uh, the 32 thoughts during Hockey Night in Canada, second intermission on Saturday. We, we are still, you know, there. We, we mentioned, we kind of brought up Evander Kane a little bit when the story broke out when he was released or when his contract was terminated by the San Jose Sharks. And I also talked about it on Locked in NHL with Mike. We talked about who is going to want a guy like this because the fact, yes, he is still a very good player. He still has, you know, he can score goals. He's not a bad talent. and could really help a team make a good playoff push. And the Edmonton Oilers were attached towards Kane's name. However, there is an ongoing investigation with Evander Kane 
Darren Dreger tweeted this out yesterday. Some rumblings about Evander Kane and the conclusion of the NHL investigation and COVID protocol breach. Sources say the league is hopeful it will have something by midweek. Either that means today, tomorrow, and or Thursday, or it may get pushed all the way to the end of the week. However, what Elliot Freeman dropped on us on Saturday during Hockey Night in Canada from Sportsnet and Hockey Night in Canada's Elliot Freeman, he says that the Washington Capitals have apparently expressed interest in Evander Kane. And shout out to MinuteCast, by the way, for uh, tagging us in this one here. I was watching the game myself because I was watching the Leafs and Islanders in a close game there while the Sens and uh, the Sens and uh, Caps were going on there. Um, also because the fact that the Sens and Caps were also on Hockey Night in Canada, but just on one of the other channels. But anyways, I understand. Yes, look at the game last night and you see the fact that the Caps couldn't score a goal. I understand. It sucks. There, there is a time and a place to give a player a second chance to have a reclamation project. You know, we, we talk about Robin Leonard and what a great advocate he is for mental health now and how he was able to battle back and, you know, shout out to the New York Islanders for helping him out and the Chicago Blackhawks and now the Vegas Golden Knights for giving him the opportunity to continue to play. The problem is, though, is that Robin Leonard, compared to Evander Kane here, is that Robin Leonard has fixed it has fixed himself, he has fixed his problem, and he's back to being, you know, the Robin Leonard that he was when he was a big goaltending prospect coming out of Sweden. Evander Kane, time and time and time again, and I'm not over-exaggerating that, has shown that he is unwilling to, unwilling to change. We talk about the jumpsuit incident in Winnipeg, which pretty much got him traded to Buffalo for Tyler Myers, and the Jets end up going to the playoffs without Evander Kane. Starts to turn things around in Buffalo, does Kane. Playing with Jack Eichel, scoring goals, showing that he's still a very good hockey player. Ends up getting traded to the San Jose Sharks. Helps them out, has some good playoff success. But then we hear the story about the, about the gambling issues. We hear the stories about the alleged uh, domestic uh, domestic abuse situations, which was, uh, as far as we know, are not true. However, that was a story that came out. Uh, we mentioned the gambling addictions. And then, of course, we hear about the COVID protocol breach with him using a fake vaccine card to try to be able to pass by with the San Jose Sharks. And then we hear the fact that he's traveling back up to British Columbia, up to Vancouver, even though he'd recently tested positive for COVID-19. I'm sorry, this check marks all the boxes to not bring him in. I understand. Is he a good player? Could help your team win games? Sure. And I know people went after Connor McDavid when he was asked the question because we mentioned the Edmonton Oilers were seemingly a candidate for Evander Kane. I don't, in good conscience, would want my team to sign a guy that's a massive question mark in the locker room. There was honestly, people, there was speculation that Tomas Hurdle in the San Jose organization was not going to re-sign because Evander Kane was still on the team. But since then, what we've heard is that the San Jose Sharks, with him out of the locker room, off the team, and he was in the American League for the first part of the year, sure, but everyone was, it was much more relaxed. It was much more loose. They didn't feel like they had a burden on their team. Evander Kane has shown time and again that this is a player that you cannot trust to make good decisions. Okay? He's a great hockey player. Good talent. But is that worth risking altering and hurting the dynamic of your team in the locker room? I'm sorry. I'd rather have a team with one less score that has a good camaraderie in the locker room, a team that's willing to hang out together, play together, work hard together, than to have a guy in the room that just doesn't want to be there and just is able at the drop of a hat, the snap of the fingers, to do something dumb that'll hurt the look of the franchise. The San Jose Sharks have shown here in the last few months here, they've tried everything they can to give Kane a chance. Yes, they they put him down in the American League and whatnot, and they did what they could. It's like, you know what? Figure it out. Go figure it out now. And then the, he goes out and does the thing over New Year's and travels with COVID after testing positive with COVID. I don't understand the 
the concept or the thought process behind what Kane has done. And I really don't understand the thought process if Brian McClellan wants to bring this guy into the Capitals just because, oh, we can win more games with him. What What is... Like, that's the problem. We talked about... We talked about... What did we talk about yesterday with Jordan Subban? The toxic hockey culture there is. What did we talked about last week, the toxic youth hockey culture. Toxic hockey culture is a thing because there are people that are still in the game that completely put aside personal problems and anything else. As long as they win games, they get those two points, they win the big ones, and they have a chance to win the cup. That's all that matters. What, what shirt have I worn time and time again? Winning the cup isn't everything. No, granted, yes, that was in relation to the Kyle Beach saga, which we don't need to go into, but you get my drift here. Care about your players. Care about helping them just stay sane. Don't bring in someone that could hurt your team, hurt your franchise, and give you guys a bad rap. Because that's all Evander Kane has done for the majority of his career. Given chance after chance after chance after chance, and has still shown that nobody should trust him. Don't bring in Evander Kane. I don't care if he's a good hockey player. He's not going to help your team. That is it for this edition of Locked On Capitals, everyone. Follow us at Locked On Caps every single day. On Twitter, follow me, the insider of the insiders, Tyler Kuehl, at TJKU29. I know we ended on sour notes the last two shows. I'm sorry. I had to address the Evander Kane story because, unfortunately, we couldn't get to it yesterday. Hopefully, we don't have to talk about it anymore, but you know what? Old boys club, it's hockey. Old, the, the old NHL boys club, it's a thing. They don't care who you are, what you've done. Like my good buddy Steve Dangle mentioned once, and he's mentioned time or two again, the Hockey Hall of Fame. It ain't the Hockey Hall of Good Guys, that's for sure. That is for sure. We'll be back tomorrow, and we'll kind of get teed up for the Capitals' next game when they get set to take on the – who do they play next? I had the schedule right in front of me. Where is it? They take on the San Jose Sharks. Yes, San Jose Sharks, and then the Dallas Stars on Friday, part of a little bit of a quick road swing. They go to Dallas and then Pittsburgh over the next two days for coming back home prior to the Olympic break, and then they go haywire after that. So – Thank you all very much for listening and watching this edition of Lockdown Capitals. We'll see you all tomorrow.